Hello and welcome to part 3 of this Blender 2.73 developer sneak peek series. My name is Thomas Beck and I hope that you can see and learn many useful features for your daily Blender work here. We're covering in this episode improvements in the video sequence editor, the 3D view, the texture painting and freestyle module, so there's much to show. If you'd like to read more from me and you speak German, then show me your support by buying my comprehensive Blender book from my publisher Rheinwerk Verlag or Amazon, you'll find the link in the description. But now let's start with the first feature, the 3D world background. As many of you may know, your world background that you see here in the background, as it's called, uh, is not dependent on your uh, settings in the background background node here in the cycle shader and in the Blender internal shader as well. The background is normally, um, normally led by the themes and there is a settings that's called use gradient and gradient high or off and if, if you change this gradient color uh, this uh, off color here then you see that the background is changing and when you use a gradient for that then you could do such um, fancy color combinations as you see here but that's not that uh, what we want. We want that we uh, represent the settings that we are setting here in the background live in the OpenGL view as we have here. And Blender has a new option for that and that's called uh, located under the display panel here in the world background settings. And when you enable that then you see that every change that you make here is reflected immediately in the 3D world background. And not only that, because that is cool already, but there is much more coolness. When you have an environment texture and you plug that in into the color socket here, then you'll see after some calculation time that the environment is real time updated in the 3D view. And that is extremely helpful if you'd like to uh, light your object via the texture and you'd like to uh, rotate the texture so that the sun is lighting from the right direction. And then all you have to do is just animate the Z value and you see the uh, changes in real time. So this is really an awesome new feature that is that may be a bit hidden, but it's really awesome so you should use it it's located under display and out and world background. Okay, that was it for this feature. The next one is now um, located in the texture painting settings. So let's switch to that. To show you the next feature, we have to switch between Blender 2.72 and Blender 2.73. In Blender 2.72 I prepared a very simple scene with a cube and Suzanne and we are switching to the texture painting mode now. And as you can see when I click add simple UVs and add paint slot uh, diffuse color that Blender is automatically creating a UV layout but when I try to paint on that then you see that it's a pretty pretty crappy layout. You have to say that. It's just UV unwrapped, every, every um, face is laying above each other and that's not really useful. In the case of Suzanne here, where I've got an, um, let me just show you, a subdivision surface modifier with views 2 and render 2 um, applied on it, it's even more worse because when I try to paint on, on Suzanne with those this modifier applied, then it's almost unusable. It's very laggy, laggy and very um, it's it's undoable basically. In 2.73, let me just switch to that. You see that the, that Anthony switched this behavior. Let's just uh, add a simple UV again and the diffuse color slot here. And then let's try to paint on it. And you see that it's unwrapped much better. It's um, I think, let me just look, it's unwrapped with the uh, simple cube method and it's uh, followed by a pack operation, so the faces are packed on the image. And when you see um, how, I, how I do that on the Suzanne mesh, 
add some POVs and add a diffuse color and try to paint on her, then you see that it's more or less uh, exactly as fast as with the cube, even though my model is subdivided heavily. And so it's uh, much more useful and much better now in the 2.73 release. Apart from that, you can now enter values when you, for example, hit F to um, to increase or decrease the radius. Then you couldn't use some values on your um, on your keyboard until now. But when you'd like to have the radius set to 100 now, then you just would enter 100, enter, and it would be 100. So you can now. Um, much more easily define how your strength or how your uh, radius is. Your strength, that's impo especially important when you'd like to have it to, uh, set to 1, then you would just hit Shift F and then hit 1 Enter and it's there. So those are two features that are very helpful, but there is one last feature and that is that the snake hook and the crab brushes now have a strength parameter. So let's just switch to the sculpt mode and apply the <clears throat> apply the modifier first. And then we'll um, enable dynamic topology. Vertex style, yeah, that's correct. The dynamic topology is activated. And then let's switch to the snake hook. And then you see immediately that we got a strength slider here. And this strength slider was not there in 2.72. So you couldn't um, you couldn't activate the snake brush without having full influence on your mesh. But now you can set the strength to, for example, 0 0.2. And then it's doing exactly what you would imagine. So uh, those two additions are especially important for sculptors. And now we come to the sequencer. Yeah, guys, you heard right. There are improvements for the VSE. Um, I'm especially extremely happy about, uh, happy about this because I love the uh, VSE and I'm using it very often, especially for the sneak peeks, as you may have guessed. Um, and the VSE has the following new features. The first one is a very useful one when you are working in the full screen mode. The new full screen mode, I know if, uh, that you remember it well, is uh, enabled with Alt and F10. And then you are in this full screen mode. And let me just switch back and enable the new feature, use backdrop. We do that and uh, enable the full screen mode again and drag then you see that the new mode is uh, drawing a backdrop um, behind your strips. And so you can very easily um, use your full working area while cutting um, while you see your, script, uh, your strip. And that is very convenient and very uh, helpful if you are um, using your strips in a zoomed in way like this because then you have the possibility to see all the script the strips and see your edits immediately in the background so that is very cool and very helpful the next uh, feature is the uh, waveforms feature and as you may see here i let me just um, disable the backdrop so you can see it a bit better um, here you can see that I've got waveforms enabled in those two files here. Those have the draw waveform uh, checkbox op uh, option here enabled. But when I'd like to have those uh, checkbox options enabled on every uh, audio strip, strip in my project, then I would have to go to every clip, every audio clip, and then enable draw waveform. And that is very inconvenient. And um, and the, the problem is that you could do that via Python, but now a Blender has an option for that. And that is hidden in the view menu under waveform drawing. And there's now the waveforms off, the waveforms on, and the use strip option. 
And the use strip option is doing exactly what, what I showed you now, uh, because that is using the thing that you uh, enable or disable here. But when you have the waveform drawing to waveforms on, then every waveform in the project will be generated and shown immediately. And when you switch them off, then it's vice versa. So that is really very helpful when you have projects where you have to cut uh, frame-wise and, um, ex and at exact audio positions. And another feature that um, Blender introduced in the newest build is, or in the 2.73 build, uh, is the slip tool that is enabled by hitting by selecting a strip and hitting S. And when you do that, then you'll see that Blender is moving the contents of the strip inwards or outwards of the um, of the current clip, of the current strip, and so you can position it much better without having to manually move the sliders here and to cut or whatever you had to do before. And the last feature for the VSE is strip snapping. So let me just duplicate this, this strip. And um, before you weren't able to snap strip starts or strip ends to, um, to other strip starts or strip ends. And now you are just initiate the uh, translation with G and then hold uh, control and you see that it's snapping immediately to other strips. And that is uh, especially helpful if you'd like to place your strips um, in sync with others. And that's, that concludes the uh, VSE features and I hope you like it. Last but not least, did Freestyle receive a very cool feature and that is the Freestyle SVG export plugin. You have to enable it via um, your user preferences under add-ons. It's under community and you have to enter SVG to uh, access it. Freestyle SVG exporter, enable it. And then you got a new panel here right there in the render tab. And when you enable Freestyle and Freestyle SVG export, then you have the possibility to export frames or to export animations. And um, those animations are uh, really cool because they are Freestyle SVG animations. So you got one SVG file and um, that can be played back in Chrome or Firefox or whatever SVG um, browser supports SVG animations. And to show you that, let me just set up a very simple scene with Freestyle. Uh, for example, this one gets the Freestyle line settings. Hey, didn't I enable it? Freestyle. Let me use the Blender render that's easier to set up. The Freestyle line then freestyle line blue with an alpha of one and this material gets an another one freestyle line let's say it gets red material freestyle lines and then we'll say this got a color modifier material with the line color and if we went render now then you'll see we got blue and red outlines and um, when we look at our output now and you see that's on the temp world background let me just to open a new folder and then you see that there is the svg and this svg is exported on the fly in the temp um, directory and when you let's just do a quick animation with a rotation keyframe there and a rotation keyframe at frame 30 that shouldn't be too nice it's just for demoing and now let's do a simple animation by hitting control and f12 and now let's go again into our directory and then you'll see 
that he is he created a SVG for every image that you rendered because we have here under freestyle SVG export the um, mode, mode set to frame and not to animation so you could easily create many frames many SVG frames if you need to but when we set that to animation and render again then you'll see that we got one animation here this SVG viewer is not capable of playing back animations but let me just do that with Firefox so drag that into Firefox and you'll see that we got an SVG animation live playing in Firefox and created from Blender. So that is really a cool uh, feature for web, develop web developers and I think that's, uh, that we're going to see much more animation in the web created via Blender now. So this concludes already the newest episode of the Blender Developer Sneak Peek. I hope that you had fun. Subscribe and uh, we'll see us next time, but next time with brand new features for the 2.74 branch. Um, so we are back to normal then and we'll see us then. Happy blending. Bye.